thank you for that. Maraming pong salamat sa lahat na nag-attend. And I hope, walang foreigner, we are all Filipinos here. I can I can speak Tagalog from time to time. It's okay, no? Para medyo a bit informal tayo. Kasi pagka masyado na mga formal, masyado ng mahirap, no? Kasi I want my audience, every time I speak, to feel comfortable. Yeah, so that you could easily relate to the topic that uh, I'll be discussing. For this afternoon, what I'm going to present to the group is about coral and taklobo gardening. Taklobo is actually a local term for uh, giant club. So the project is uh, being implemented in Tai Tai Palawan. And this is under uh, an ATB assisted project. Uh, the Coastal and Marine Resources Management in the Bahara Triangle Southeast Asia. Uh, uh, and this is implemented as what Nova mentioned under the PES scheme, Payment for Ecosystem Services. So while many of you are in the agriculture, I said this is something different because we will be talking about brief, we will be talking about marine conservation, but Considering that the, uh, the scope of the project will be on the test, I'm sure many of the economic students would be somehow be learning from the some of the info that uh, I'll be sharing to you this afternoon. Oh, sorry. Let me talk about the Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, a little discussion on the ADD support to the CTI-CFF. CTI is the Coral Triangle Initiative, uh, Coral Fisheries and uh, Food uh, Security Project. Uh, CTI, uh, for those who are not familiar with this, it, it is uh, some kind of an initiative, uh, an agreement uh, among six countries in South uh, three in Southeast Asia and three in the Pacific region, they joined and uh, they would like to address the uh, coral disruption, the marine disruption going on in the coral triangle area. I'll be discussing also about Tai Tai, where Tai Tai is, how important Tai Tai in the context of tourism development uh, and it's being under threat and how our project under the best scheme could somehow help in addressing the threat of uh, marine destruction in Tai Tai Bay. And then uh, before I wind up, I'm going to have a four minute video presentation of what we're doing in Tai Tai. So, as mentioned a while ago, this is part of the uh, ADP support of the CTI CFF project. Uh, ADP is now giving assistance to the Southeast Asia and to the Pacific region in doing a project that will support implementation of the plan of action. Each country under the CTI, CTI they have individual national action or plan of activities in Papua and also a regional plan of action. And to, to implement that, because it's a big, big uh, project uh, to conserve and, and, and rehabilitate the marine area in the coral triangle, ADP is giving support to that. It's specifically in terms of knowledge management, in capacity building of the local officials and local stakeholders in the different six countries, Provision of alternative livelihood and on sustainable financing. So for this afternoon, I'm going to discuss to you that aspect of sustainable financing. Kasi mahaba yung ano, yung kabuha na uh, CTI, uh, ADB ini, uh, intervention in the CTI area. So this is where the tie is, you know? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Tai Tai is located in the northern part of Pahawai and it is actually beside or the town before you reach El Nido. I'm sure many of you are familiar with El Nido, right? El Nido is 
a very popular tourism destination, not only in the Philippines, but practically worldwide. Uh, you know, you Google and you, know, you will know that it's a very, very nice place. But when we did our study in Taitai, we found out that Taitai is far more better than El Nido in terms of potential for tourism development. I'm going to show that to you later on. So, but the map you will see, this is the bay where we, we're doing our study. This is the Mount Haya South, and this is where the El Nido is. And in Taitai, you can do a lot in terms of tourism. You can do trekking. You can do bird watching, uh, you can do kayaking, boating, you can do uh, 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 diving, you know, snorkeling. Have, have a taste of what uh, historical landmarks are there. Beaches are wonderful, uh, uh, falls are indeed amazing. So, these are some of the I'm going to bring you to Taipei so that you'll have an idea why it become uh, the next tourist destination in Palawan. Uh, we have there the Apulit Island. Apulit is where uh, the Apulit Resort is located. This is part of the big uh, tourist resort developed by the, by the Ten Nuts Development Corporation. Uh, Napakaganda po nung lugar, you'll be able to go there. We have the pavilion, uh, the beach is there, the beach there is so nice. Palakanin Island, the Nova Nova. Recently, the Nova Nova was the, the site where uh, he advertised for ng konti. In the future, there will be an American TV series that will be shown in the U.S. They shoot it here. It's, it's a native virgin something to be serious, parang dating. Where I, when I went there, when I did my survey, uh, they were shooting, they're all naked. My God, get a nice, get a nice view. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then island beaches are, are also nice. When you have uh, the Dinamayan Island, the Dinok Island, Kimbaludan Island, Sadar Beach. And the uh, equally nice are the dive spots area. Pavilion Grande, Lopez Reef. No, I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm getting confused with, the, with this. No? Look, look at this big corals. No? Even bigger than the, than the uh, diver itself. Uh, nice underwater species. Look at the corals and the black rock, all very nice. And in the terrestrial area, they have equally beautiful attraction there. Uh, they have the Kaniki Falls, the Lake Mangwao. Uh, soon with this develop, uh, I'm sure uh, this will even surpass some of our lakes in the Philippines in terms of attraction and activities that could be done there. Uh, kayaking, boating would be perfect in this place. And interesting wildlife. We have giant whining foxes, we have fallen cornbill, white squirrel. Uh, they have that wild duck in the in the in the Malampaya area, sea turtle, Irowody dolphin. There are only a few of them left now. And Haifa is very proud that they still have some of them in the Malampada Sound area. And unfortunately, just like any other places in the Philippines, particularly in the Bay Area, likewise in Southeast Asia, Pacific region, and practically in the whole world, Taipei Bay is under threat. Uh, right now, oh sorry, sorry, this is very sensitive, okay. Right now, the place is being invaded by sargassum. Sargassum are grasses, you know. Actually, when there are a few, they are okay. They're part of the natural habitat of the water. But when they become so massive and when they invaded the coral area, uh, you know, napapatahin nila yung mga corals. And there are also sea orchids that are now invading the area. Uh, Lots of herbivores, the fish that eat some of this, uh, there are only a few of them now because of the over-harvesting, over-fishing. 
and there are calls for a breaching and unfortunately bombing the dynamite fishing in the area is still going on uh, it's, it's really a pity so we in our project we're thinking of several approaches on how to address this as I mentioned a while ago we have capacity building we're training local people on how to do uh, or how to you know effectively manage the coral area we have the livelihood that we are introducing to the uh, local people and on my part under sustainable financing we are we are thinking of an, an approach an ecosystem service based a strategy that could be used to sustainably finance a development project like coral reef rehabilitation in Taipei. Experience have taught us that one reason why many interventions are failing or fail because after the donors, you know, uh, yes, leave the, uh, the the project site there will be no more sustainable financing to support activities. So what we're thinking under, the, under this particular project is to come up with a sustainable financing scheme under the best. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the payment for ecosystem services approach. So what, what, what we did uh, to start the best, initially uh, we did uh, a, 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 a benchmarking, you got to know what do they have in the area, what do they have in that time, what, what's the status of the marine resources in the area, how, how fishing is being done, uh, what's the social organization, the, the, the demography, the social structure, the organization in the area. So we, we try to, to, to develop, to determine the benchmark so that we would know if when we introduce an intervention, we will be able to know uh, are we really increasing their income now? Are we improving the status of the marine area? Uh, uh, are we able to increase the number of fish in the area at the end of the day, you know, after the implementation of the project? And more importantly, the tourism, because this is the core of the pesticide that we will be undertaking. Initially, when we did consultation in the area, it really turned out that the best ecosystem service that can be promoted under the best scheme would be tourism because of the high potential of the area for tourism development. And you do know very well there are several, uh, several categories of ecosystem services, and tourism is under the cultural aspect. You know? There are provisioning uh, category of best uh, ecosystem service, regulatory, cultural, and, and others. So we agreed after consultation with some of the local people, local officials, local stakeholders that under the best scheme, the, the, the most potential that we could introduce or develop in the area would be tourism. So, oh, sorry. So we did focus group discussion, we went about uh, in our, in our uh, target guys, we had AIIs, I'm sure you're familiar with that, we did interviews, and under water, we uh, put up some transit, uh, transit and we did uh, some survey of the status of the corals in the area, how, how uh, you know, the, the extent of destruction, uh, the, what are the remaining fish uh, diversity, fish diversity are still there. So after establishing the benchmark in the area, we, we confirmed our initial uh, conceptualization that under the best scheme, the best would be to reset. And from there, after you know talking to uh, and after talking to, to some stakeholders and our group of technical experts from the Western Philippine University, marine expert, we arrived at an idea that coral and taklobo gardening, if they could be developed in the area and promoted under the best scheme, would be the best under the sustainable financing that we are uh, implementing in the area. So 
sa mention of Agado, the ecosystem service or services that we'll be promoting would be to recent, specifically the coral and the global gardening, the ES providers and sellers, if you are familiar with the PES, because there will be three major players under this, uh, three major uh, components of the PES scheme, the ecosystem service, the ES providers and sellers, and the ES buyer, because payment wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't materialize if there will be no one to buy the service that you will be introducing. So under the coral and the global gardening, we thought that the provider would be the local fishermen's association, particularly the Pilak Sama in the area, the MRC, uh, Fisheries uh, Agricultural Resources Management Council in the area, and then the local LGO. And who will be the buyer of the coral triangle, a uh, coral at Lobo Garden? It will be the local resort owners and the tourist visitors. Okay, so we're able to conceptualize the whole idea of CPG. After that, we presented it again to the to the uh, local stakeholders. We presented it to the to the LGU official, to the mayor, to the vice mayor, to the tourism officer, planning officer. In short, the the people that comprise that comprise the uh, local executive. After which. We also presented the idea to the Sarbunian Pambayan of Taipei, the legislator, the councilman, and then we also talked to some of the resort owners, other stakeholders, the DNR, and other organizations in the area. And they all agreed that, okay, CTG uh, looks like it will work in the area. So after which, after we developed the whole idea of coral global gardening, now we go into the third aspect of uh, uh, coral taklobo gardening, which is the training, training of the local people on coral and taklobo gardening. So we conducted lecture. This is Ben, Dr. Ben Gonzalez, an expert on on fish and 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 the coral in the area. This is Roger Miller, also a WPU expert on giant. Uh, uh, giant plant gardening, and we have hands-on training on the preparation of plates that we will be using in planting coral fragments. So we taught the local people on how to do all these things, uh, and then we 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 did the actual coral planting. Uh, initially, we, uh, here you can see some of the coral coral fragments planted in the, in the tube here and transporting that in the coral platform that we installed underwater about uh, 30 feet under you know? and then uh, we also saw the need to train local people on scuba diving because the coral at local gardening will be anchored on how the local fishermen will act as tourist guide to the tourists who will go to the area because we were envisioning that the local people, the local fishermen will be the one uh, guiding the tourists when they go down, when they pick coral fragments and when they plant uh, coral fragments in the uh, garden area. So that, that will be the kind of interaction that will be going on. Uh, the, the, the tourists will not be, will not be allowed to, to dive on their own, particularly, especially when they go into coral and technology gardening, they will be guided by the local people. And this is where payment would come in. Every time the local people are tapped as guide in coral and technology gardening, the, 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 the visitor who will, you know, uh, who will undergo the kind of tourism experience will have to pay. I'm going to explain that to you more later on. So he saw the need to uh, train the local people and make them professional, party uh, certified uh, divers. Okay. And then this is how we did coral gardening. Initially, uh, we, we collected coral fragments from the wild, and then we tied the, the coral, coral fragments in the coral plates. The coral plates are brought down to the coral 
platform underwater. And then now, what we're doing is every month, uh, uh, together with local divers that we train, we monitor the growth of the area of, of the different corals. And uh, I'm happy to report to you that in the recent uh, dive that we did last month, we registered a 99% survival of our coral fragment. Ang taas taas ang ganda ganda. Okay. So, uh, and then we established also another uh, coral garden in Kimbaludan Island. The first one was or is in the North Island. This one is something different because instead of using coral plates where we tie or we attach the, the fragments that we collected here, we directly plant coral fragments or, or a bigger fragments like this direct on the substrates here. That's what we do. Uh, we have, we have uh, several approaches uh, in, in establishing the coral garden. So this one, one in here, we have bamboo, which we use to, to you know, as, as a post, so that when there is strong current, the fragments will not be blown by the, by the current. It's still strongly attached. Because in a matter of one month, because corals are, you know, they, they naturally cement self or themselves on the substrate. So after a month, you know, even if there is strong current, they can, you know, they can stay. Okay, so that's what we did in Kimbaludan Island. And then in the, recently in the Patakanian Island, we, we have domes introduced in the area. Uh, this time instead the coral fragment uh, tied or attached to a coral plate. Here, this is, uh, the fragments are directly tied to the domes and then the domes are, domes are uh, installed underwater. Something, something different. Uh, we envision that after six months or one year, this will grow and fish would be coming to that to that area. It will attract the fish already. Now, the other, the Taklo, but the giant club gardens, what we do here is we gather for a uh, giant club also from the wild, we clean them, and we tag them. You know, tatagalubi ko to kasi masarap eh. Napakaganda kasi nung coral, tuwag-tuwa kasi yung mga mga native na mga palaway nyo sa coral. Eh, ako po po, giant club. Kasi yung laman niya ang sarap na pulutan. Every time they open it, they get the milk. Meat ba na ako doon? Ang sarap-sarap. Isasawsaw mo lang sa suka, I can best explain it in Tagalog. And napakasarap, no? So, yeah, my God. So, the, the population of the of the Aklobo in the area is really, you know, reducing significantly. And that's why we, we would like to to uh, put them in a place where, where it can be also later on serve as an attraction. Another trivia, because of the ongoing collection, over-harvesting of giant club in the area, they are now located far apart. It's different, you know, the, the bay is so wide. And a global giant club will not reproduce if they are far apart. They should be together. You know, their, their, their egg and their sperm cell should be. Otherwise, if they are far apart, pag, pag lumabas na yung kanilang itlog, sperm cell, at hindi magpipatay, they will not going to multiply. So, it, it would be very, very technically feasible to put them together so that they could multiply easily and having them in a garden would be a very nice attraction for the tourists. What we intend to do in Texas Island is to create a highway of Taklobo, giant plants, so that when they die, they move around, they move around the island, they will, they will have an opportunity to experience moving Taklobo or looking at the Taklobo in the area. That would be something, uh, an experience that's worth uh, having, you know. And these are the, how we arrange, well, I'm talking too much, okay. I'll, I'll try to be fast, okay. Uh, we, have, we have triangular shape Taklobo garden. Uh, we have round and so on and so forth. So now we are uh, maintaining it, and again, 
I'm happy to say that we have a 99% also survival of the tacloid area. Uh, Siguro of the, of the 300 plus that we that we transferred to the area, dalawa lang yung namatay, isa lang hindi, dalawa lang. Okay, now, the fourth aspect in the designing the sustainable financing scheme, grid conservation, would be uh, how the CTG will work under the scheme of the best. So, we're very proud to say that although there are many coral gardening, coral, no, no, coral rehabilitation being done practically all over the, the world, ours would be a pioneering in terms of tourism activity. Because what we would like to offer to the tourists would be an experience of actually planting coral fragments. Right now, planting rehabilitation of corals are being done by okay, by some by some guys from the DNR, by, by, by local stakeholders, by some organization, by the academic, but seldom. I'm not saying wala naman. Seldom tourists are actually enjoying to plant. But this time, what we would like to, to introduce under the PESI scheme would be that experience of planting coral fragment, that experience of actually transferring uh, logo from one place to another. They, they, they gonna pay for that experience. And when, when they are doing their planting, they will be photographed, they will be video. And that particular corals that they will plant, they will be tagged, named after Lope Calano, for instance. Or, 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 who else, you know? Uh, Nova, Nova, Coral Fragment Nova. Okay, and then you will form part, the tourists that will undergo this experience, will have this experience, will be put in our list of coral heroes, at Lobo heroes, which we will upload in the web. And every six months, we're gonna show, for instance, hey, Nova, your fragments is already, it looks like this now. Do you want to, do you want to help maintain this coral of yours? You can donate. So it's, it's a, some kind of a, of a funding scam, you know? Uh, so we can solicit that anyone who would be tagged as Coral Bureau, as a local hero, would be happy, you know, at your face, Sounds familiar, no, I'm just kidding. Your face will be uploaded in the web with your corals there, shown. And Nova, Lope, Coral, you know, planted in, in, in 2015 of October, something like that, no? So, it's, it's worth, we thought, uh, it's nice. When we presented the whole idea to some uh, uh, local tour operators, they love it. Uh, in Honda Bay, when we did our interview, they said, when are you going to introduce that experience to our, to our tourists? Better bring them to that time. But hey, wait, we're still doing this. So, yeah. So during our initial interview, okay, my God, yeah, I have only 15 minutes left. Okay. Uh, we, we found out that the coral of global gardening, the idea of that under the pesticide, uh, it's, it's welcome practically by many people that we interviewed, the local stakeholders, the tourists, and they are willing to pay from 200 to 600 pesos to have that kind of experience in Taklobo and, and coral gardening. And based on our initial computation, uh, 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 I'm going to go there later on. Uh, I think I passed that one, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, so there are many other possible sources of income. Uh, the, the tourists can, can rent the, the, the scuba diving gears. There will be uh, environmental fees, there will be entrance fees, boat rental, tour guide, food, transportation, and so on and so forth. So based on our initial computation, there are now, uh, based on our recent survey, something like, uh, uh, how many? 10,000 visitors uh, in Taipei. So, uh, with 200 to 600 pesos, we, one can easily earn something like 3.8 to 4 million pesos per year. This is over and above the projected 175 million pesos that could be earned from the tourist uh, 
uh, uh, using the accommodation facilities in the area. So, under the PES scheme, what we would like to do is, we're going to distribute this income. 50% of the money that will be generated under the PES scheme will, will go to the local uh, fish fishermen, the ES provider. 10% will go to the LGU, 10% to the other ecosystem providers, and 30% will be put under the conservation trust fund. It is very, very important because this is where the, uh, the money will be drawn to continuously maintain and rehabilitate the Oral and Tacobo Garden in the area. So, again, as, as mentioned, this is... Oh, what happened? Okay, so this is the formal video. Please bear with us so that you'll have a better idea of what we're, what, what we're doing in the area. Okay. Alala, the Philippines last frontier lies within the Coral Triangle. Hundreds of marine and terrestrial species take refuge in its enchanted mountains and seas. In northern Palawan, the old fishing village of Lengkai sits still. It quietly boasts of beaches with heavenly white sand, thick forests, and creatures not seen anywhere else on the planet. Hence, it is a tourist haven, yet it is barely known and virtually unexplored. Travelers pass over this hidden utopia to visit El Nido, the Thai's more popular neighbor. In addition, visitors are few in Thai. This is because of weak tourism plans and undeveloped destinations. Like a dancer in the darkness, the stage has not been set up for Kaitai. Giant Clam Gardening, a project of the Coral Triangle Initiative, Southeast Asia, aims to create a Daikai Light Novel, a prime tourist destination in the Coral Triangle region. This activity is designed to give Daikai's tourism its much needed boost. In the future, visiting adventurers will be offered the unique experience of planting coral fragments and translocating the global. Through this, the growing tribe of ecologically aware tourists helps rehabilitate the Thai streams. Moreover, local fishers gain extra jobs to set up and maintain the gardens. At the same time, more tourists need improved business for entrepreneurs, like resort and transport operators. Likewise, environmental fees from tourism will fund the local government's conservation projects and all local stakeholders will benefit from a conservation trust fund in prospect. But like many places around the world, Taitai is a treasure at risk. In the past few years, Taitai's reefs have been dominated by macroalgae. These hamper the reef's growth and development. This macroalgae will never form tyrants of the reefs, but the fish that eat them have been overfished. Sadly, Lost reefs means lost fish and lost tourism opportunities. Will Taitai be stripped off of its beauty even before it charms the whole world? The Coral and the Global Gardening Game Plan is to help realize Taitai's tourism potential by protecting reefs. This is possible only through the local government's active support. The strong commitment of local fishers the ongoing involvement of entrepreneurs and the enthusiasm of tourists and the whole Taitai community. Through the pilot sea gardening activity, Taitai communities become drivers of their own economic growth as they take upon themselves the responsibility of building healthy roots. It is a scheme that sets the stick. Anyway, uh, it's almost done anyway. So, with that, thank you very much. Uh, this point, we open the floor for any of our audience.
process uh, clarifications or inquiries regarding the presentation. By the way, my colleague Donna from Primex is distributing now uh, a publication on, on the test benchmarking that we did. Uh, this will be a series of learning notes that we will publish. Uh, this one is on the baseline. Next to that would be the tourism, then the marine, and then the then the coral garden, and so on and so forth. So the, what we envision is to have about eight series of these learning notes to capture all the learnings uh, from this uh, intervention that we're doing in Taipei. What we also would like to do later on would be to uh, replicate this uh, coral global gardening in Indonesia and in Malaysia. Yep. Uh, is there now an airport at Taipei? Uh, there are no buildings. There, uh, there used to be, but they are now rehabilitating it in preparation for this uh, tourism. Actually, uh, the local government of Taipei is now really looking at tourism as their next uh, uh, development, uh, target of development. The highways, uh, the, the road leading to that airport that you passed is now being, uh, uh, you know, uh, being paid, yes. And, uh, yeah, uh, soon that airport will be serviceable. In addition, uh, the road road is also being developed, the pier that will bring some of the tourists from Batangas, uh, they can go to Coron, then to, to this part of the country, Taitai and Nido. Uh, right now, the best way to reach Taitai is through, uh, well, Puerto Princesa, you take uh, airplane, and then from Puerto Princesa, there are lots of van, private van that can be rented. It's only about three hours to four hours drive from Puerto Princesa. Yung natitipid na konti, uh, airport buses are also available. I asked a question because more than 20 years ago, which means I was more than 20 kilos. <laughs> you were sexier then. Yes. But sexy also. It's too big. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was part of a team yes. uh, headed by SESAM. Oh, yeah. We did the environmental impact and social impact assessment of that area to build an airport, to, to, uh, to get a better airport. And our sponsor then was Club Noah. Oh. It's Club Noah's Club Club Noah is the best. And uh, surprise, one of the biggest social impacts that the locals were afraid of was prostitution. Oh. Because of the, you know, if you have a if you have a full-blown tourism, you know, tourism industry. And then also, the number one objection to that airport was El Nido, actually. Yeah. So, so I was just surprised, because I haven't been there. That was 25 years ago. I, maybe I'm happy that there will be an airport. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be, yeah. be ever there. Yeah, actually it's two things, you know, it can spark development and at the same time some social problems that will, you know, uh, develop out of that. El Nido, yeah, we were the one who declared early El Nido as protected area when I was still the director of that National Integrated Protected Areas Program. So when we explored El Nido way back uh, late 1990s, and wasn't like that yet, you know, you can go there and, and very nice place. Now, my God, you know, the, the place is so urbanized. To Wilgabe, ang ingay ng mga karaoke, prostitution is there. Uh, solid ways, uh, the bay in the area is, uh, you know, with, with polyform, things like that. What is selling now in El Nido are the private resort by the Tenas Development Corporation that done it. But, but in the other areas, they are, they are really destroyed. The Club Nova that you are talking about now is the Apulit Resort. Uh, they used to be owned by, by the Club Nova Isabel. Uh, the Tenants Development Corporation saw the potential of that area, so they bought it. And they named that now as Apulit Resort under the Tenants Development. 
hopefully Tai Tai will not lead to that direction. Uh, with the proper with the proper regulation, proper guidance, we would like to learn from the lesson of El Nino. So yeah, that's why part of our uh, intervention would be on the capability building aspect. I hope we will not lead to that. Good afternoon, I'm Lee, a PhD student from CESAM. Yeah. Because you have been my, one of my panel in my yeah. presentation. That's not kind of thing. Yes, sir. Kelly, yeah, you have already mentioned about the waste. That uh, there's a great possibility that we will uh, accumulate waste because yes. of one of uh, the focuses on tourism. And we know that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of waste that can be accumulated. So is there any policies or strict uh, yeah, a random policy regarding that. And then, do we incorporate, we know that computing PES, there's a benefit and cost. Do we incorporate this, uh, such things in computing the payment for ecological services? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that question. Uh, on the solid waste, uh, the local government is now focusing into that. They, they, they really anticipate that this would be a big problem. So, uh, for instance, the tourism code, which somehow incorporate part of the you know, solid waste problem that might be generated in the, in the, in the future, is already being uh, reviewed by the Sangunian Bayan of Tai Tai. Uh, hopefully, they, aside from the fee that, 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 they, that they will impose in the future, aspect of yeah, solid waste. Uh, hopefully, uh, I do not know. I have not seen yet, but hopefully, the the social problem that may crop up will also be addressed. So this is now being looked into. Uh, they have a strong solid waste uh, management in the area. Uh, in my in my visit every every month visit in Tai Tai Bay, it's not as worse as how El Nido looks like now, especially the Bay Area. It's still nice. Uh, hopefully in the next 10 years, uh, it will still be, they'll be able to maintain that or even improve. Uh, uh, on the second question on the amount of payment, part of the study that we're doing is the continued valuation, willingness to pay study. So we are now doing that with uh, some economists uh, of the WP, Western Philippine University. So we're interviewing so that we will be able to determine how much would be the acceptable amount that we could charge to the tourists. Although during our initial survey, we arrived at a range of 200 to uh, 600. Uh, that was a product of, a, of an initial interview we did in, on the bay. But right now we're doing a more comprehensive willingness to pay study when it, we have several bids. Those who are familiar with contingent valuation, uh, we have several bids amount and then from there uh, we will we'll be able to compute uh, the you know acceptable amount that can be charged to tourists and at the same time later on on the on the sharing of the income uh, we will be able to know that. So it's still ongoing that part of the study. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gaube, uh, for your very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you. I, I would like to inform uh, the, here uh, that uh, some 25 years ago, when I was a member of the ADB team that uh, developed and submitted a project uh, in Northern Palawan, I recommended that uh, at least three important recommendations that there should be no developments along the shores of uh, Northern Palawan. Second, there should be no peace funds or minimum, minimal, minimum peace funds. And the third is the planting of mangrove species along the shores to protect the islands and the people from storms, uh, waves, or whatever. Uh, I saw in your uh, pictures yes. that uh, I, I did 
tidak si ini mabrur tri what happened okay yes yes okay the dinner club or the room there were plenty of mangrove species but the people were busy uh, cutting and converting them into charcoal so I recommended that there should be this should be stuff instead the mangrove species because there are three mangrove species depending yes. upon the the salt, saltiness and the depth of the shore. So, uh, did you notice this? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mauricio. For the information of the young generation here, Dr. Mauricio and I, uh, we used to be with the Ecosystem Research and Development Bureau under the DNRP4. Uh, he retired early, okay. Mas matanda po siya sa akin. I also retired recently, last uh, uh, 2013 December. Anyway, uh, no one will, 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 how would they say this? Paano ba maganda? Paano ba sasagot ko si Dr. Marisha? Uh, yeah, any ecosystem, forest, marine, uh, if you lead them, don't touch them, you know, it's the best way of managing it. You know, they will, they can grow on their own. The forest can grow on their own. You know, marine corals, fish. You know, if you don't touch them, it's okay. That would be very ideal. Uh, I I will not disagree with you on that. Unfortunately, the situation is not like that now. We are in a situation where the population is growing. People in Taipei probably ten years ago isn't like this now. So. The, the need, I would say the need, to utilize the resources in the area is there. So the biggest challenge now is how to come up with a, a strategy of utilization wherein you will not be putting in jeopardy the, the, the condition of the natural environment, water, for instance, the coastal, the reef, the fish, and so on and so forth. Hopefully, in what we're doing, we could address the part. Yung lagi natin gasgas na gasgas na lagi sinasabi, sustainable development approach. Okay, we as scientists, we keep on trying several approaches and hopefully with this one, we could come up with something that will contribute to that sustainable development scheme in utilizing resources. On the aspect of mangrove, it so happened that the area that we, we implemented the project, dun sa island, wala pong mangrove. But, there are mangroves in the in the side of the mainland of Tai Tai. We have another project, another uh, another component of our project, Dareta 7813, addressing that. In fact, we're now doing a crab patterning project. We have mangrove uh, replanting. We have introduced seagrass uh, uh, planting, seaweeds rather, planting nearby the mangrove area. But I did not show it here because it's not part of our uh, pro my project in particular but certainly it's also being addressed I would like to tell the group that the mangrove in the area is still relatively nice but unlike in Bohol for instance it may be destroyed na rin, but still quite nice to look at so there is now a need to, to, to rehabilitate to, to manage it properly Sige po. I would like to follow up on the Dr. Mauritius comment. But uh, before that, I think your main problem now is the socio-economic rehabilitation of the people right there now. And you are using the Tahoe uh, Gallery. Well, in the future, especially if the airport is already there, yes. there is no entrance and no regulation for migrants. Filipino migrants going yes. to the Bell area. And how Will that did you have a program to alleviate the overcrowding and, and over extraction of uh, resources in the Tai Tai area? Because there is no restriction of people in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, not to go there. So yeah. Money. And besides, our project wouldn't be in the position to stop people from you know coming to, to Tai Tai. Uh, uh, one thing that I would like to inject is that. I think it is about time that we employ sociologists to help us 
we are uh, biological scientists, but yeah. uh, in the social economic rehabilitation, yeah. that is social. Yeah. I think uh, we should involve the social or the sociologists okay. in this matter. Yes. Siguro sa kuting ko yung kulit, kasi parang na boost ng konti yung moral ko. For the information, the majority, I'm a social scientist by profession. Probably the reason why I was stuck as a sustainable financing specialist is also to inject my academic and, and experiences in the social field of forest management. Undergrad ko po psychology, master ko po anthropology, PhD ko is community development. So I think the aspect of social, the need for the social ingredient in the in the context of this species scheme, I would assure you, I could I could put that, I could provide that. Uh, what are we doing now, uh, particularly in terms of overutilization? Because it's the problem that we have on the Of course, if we cannot offer alternative to their present. Uh, Utilization scheme, more so you destructive cyanide and 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 the uh, dynamite fishing. Really, we will face problem. This is the very reason now why we would like to inject this coral taklobo gardening and make the local fishermen, aside from their you know, the usual fishing activity that they do, to earn by being tourist guides. So they will not be dependent only on their fish that they will catch. But they will also can augment their income serving as tourist guide. Based on our initial computation, if this, if this can be done properly, there is a big possibility that they could earn more fact, from the fish that they are catching. So that's one. Another is seaweed gardening, the, the, the club patterning, crab patterning. What else we're doing, Dana, in, in, you know, uh, and, and other like you? So, our project is now pilot testing alternative sources of income in the area, so that we will be, we might, and hopefully divert the attention of the local fishermen from destructive fishing activity or marine resources utilization activity. Before Tai Tai was the seat of Live fish. You know, who lays? Guru, hindi familiar yung mga bata. Para matanda ko na, no? Ang huhuli, again, I'll explain this in Tagalog. Ang huhuli ng maliliit na mga lapu-lapu, broker, palalakihin, tapos, pag lumaki na siya, ibebenta. This is very destructive because you are, uh, what's this? Destructing the natural process of yung mga isda sa halip na mga anak, ibibenta na sa, sa Hong Kong, sa Taiwan, and in other places. So, you are, you are uh, uh, what's this? Putting some intervention into the natural process of fish reproduction. And people are doing that because of the big amount of money that they are generating. The per kilo of laku-laku in the market, particularly in Hong Kong, my God, they command big, big amount of money. So instead of waiting for you know for the fish catch them, ito, ito yung man. So now, with many intervention being done in, in Tai Tai, we are diverting that. Wala na halos live fish trading in the area. Yung one one island that they are now used that they used to uh, use for this live trade fish is already. Uh, turned into, uh, the, we are developing it now into a tourism-based uh, activity in Palakanian Island, which I showed a while ago. So these, these are the things that we are doing in the area. We are keeping our fingers crossed. We are not saying that ito na talaga. But, but we, are, we, are, we, we continuously do uh, an experiment, pilot things that hopefully could address these disruptive practices in the area. And along with that, we are doing, we are doing yeah, capability building so that the attention of the people would, would be diverted. The local people, the local legislators, we are, we are guiding them in coming up with legislation that would really uh, promote conservation in the area. And we are very happy because the local mayor and the 
the the his his yokinas, the tourism officer, the fish officer, the planning officer, the environment officer, they are they are all supporting to this idea that we're doing. Hopefully, with all this, you know, put in place, we can come up with something, a strategy that will, you know, hopefully change the direction that Tai Tai is leading to and, and will not make that as another El Nido in the future. <laughs>